I want to start with congratulations on the movie. Oh, I thought, thanks. I thought Thank you guys you. did such a great job. Um, I am curious, though. I like throwing a curveball at the beginning, right. something hopefully you haven't been asked. As a producer, director, actor, if you could get the financing to make anything you want, uh, what would you make and why? Oof, wow. Um, there's a number of thematic elements there that... All right, I'll tell you. I'll tell you specific. I tried to... Uh, put together, and it was tricky, the story of, and I, this is not just because we're making movies, there was a guy named Dean Reed. Dean Reed was a incredibly handsome guy, I mean like ridiculously handsome guy, who also happened to be a third-rate singer and a second-rate actor who just happened to become very, 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 very famous for a record in Chile, and when he went down there, he was celebrated as though he himself was Elvis Presley. And because, and because he had these social, socialist inclinations, um, he went off and became a superstar as an American rock star who decided to become a communist behind, this, behind the Iron Curtain. And I have asked people from Russia and Poland and said, do you, do you, are you familiar with the American singer, actor by the name of Dean Reed? And they said, oh yeah, Dean Reed, he was huge. He was like the American that we all knew. Uh, and I would, I would love to make a movie about that guy. Hard to do. I have never heard that story. Check and, it out. And I'm now fascinated. There's a, a YouTube, just a, um, one was named Comrade Rockstar and another movie called uh, Red Elvis. Check them out. It'll blow you out of your mind. Jumping into why I actually okay, to all talk right. to you. Yeah, yeah, Maybe yeah. I could do a deep dive on this. Um, the thing that's interesting about uh, uh, you know, Tom is that he, he was really good for Elvis at the beginning. And then... I guess it became obviously became something else, but could you sort of talk about like yeah. like that relationship at the beginning? He was instrumental, merchandising, getting Elvis off the ground, thinking big. You know, it he just... was a promoter, not a manager. He did not have an artistic thought in his body. He didn't care what Elvis sang on stage. He cared about the, re the reaction of the of the audience. He had never seen that before. Elvis could sing whatever he wanted. He literally never never made. Uh, he never made any sort of like artistic suggestion to Elvis. Uh, he says, I, I said he should sing this kind of thing. I don't know if that's true or not. And that is the yin and the yang to his diabolical genius status. He did make him, by 1961, a, uh, a, a talent that would reign eternally, probably a career that could be of import for 20 years. What he didn't do in the, later on in the 60s and to a degree in the 70s, was go to this wickedly, incredibly uh, singular talent worthy of altering the zeitgeist uh, in the mid-1950s. 19, uh, mid he never went to Elvis and said, what would you like to do? What dreams do you have? What, what, what idea? I mean, even the 1968 comeback special, he said, hey, great, we can, we can get singer sewing machines as long as you sing a song about Christmas. That's all we need. We'll make a, we'll make a lot of money. That's that's the that's the thought that he had, and there's the there's the there's the fault that I think also has to land in both of them because Elvis Elvis could have said no. He could have said. I mean, Priscilla herself told me he could have said no to those movies, but he was a guy that took him from the worst you know, rental apartment in a bad part of town in Memphis and put him in Graceland, which is the, the mansion that's right there. He did not know how to say no to someone who had already made all of his dreams come true. When watching the movie, you, you think about all the what ifs, you know? Um, I have to ask you, uh, you um, I love your work so much and I love the way, that you, you know, um, I'm just curious, what is it like for you when you are getting ready to step on set for, say, a big emotional scene on like a Monday? Mm, Can you yeah. sort of take, like, explain to me? Is it weeks in advance you're thinking about that big scene? Like, how how are you preparing for uh, it? It's a beast, uh, but you are aware of when that scene is coming, and you know if if, if it's on day forty six of a sixty eight day shooting schedule, there is a piece of you that is preparing for day forty six for every day from one through 45. You are aware that this thing is gonna be coming up. And you sort of like corral all the emotional sheep slowly over the course of it. But say, you, what you're describing there is literally something that happens on movies. Monday at 10 o'clock, you're gonna be on set and you're going to be committing to film forever. 
the emotional spine of the movie. There's no, there's no substitute for going there. But if you have gotten over the fear of making the movie in the first place, which you do, I think, in the first three days of the movie, the first three days of the movie is a chaos. Every people, you know, you think you're gonna get fired and nothing works, and you hate the director the first day, and he's okay the second. By the third day, you're you're in love with him. Uh, anything can happen during those first three days. Then after that, you just have to have this faith in your own individual process and the power of the script, and you just. You always think about it. It's, yeah, you meditate on your know, visual eyes or, you know, you, you constantly, it's like, <clears throat> it's like you have a record, you have an album by your favorite artist. And when you first buy it, you love listening to it. And by the 418th time you've listened to it, you know every pause, every word, every lyric, and you have an emotional connection, an image for every one of those songs, every one of the, uh, every one of the emotional beats that's 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 on the record and that's what you do in order to get there on monday at 10 o'clock on that note i gotta go i'm just gonna say sir it is always a pleasure to talk with you oh, thank, thank you. you so much for your work great thank you